Welcome to an introduction to collision resolution. We're going to be talking about three different methods of resolving collisions. So collisions occur when you have a hash function and you input a key into the hash function and it gives you an index that has already been occupied by another key value pair. So the first type of collision resolution that we're going to be talking about is separate chaining. And the idea of separate chaining is you're allowing the collisions to occur. So instead of trying to find a next available cell for the key value pair, you just create a link list at that index. So you build a link list if you encounter a collision. So we have a hash function, which is kmod7. So we have 3, 10, 45, 8, and 13. We're going to use those as keys, and we're going to put it into the hash function. So we start out by doing 3 mod 7, which is 3, and we put that at index 3. Next, we do 10 mod 7, which is also 3. So because of separate chaining, we just continue uh, the linked list. So we just put 10 at index 3 as well. And then we do 45 mod 7, and that also equals 3. And we continue building the linked list. Next, we encounter 8. 8 mod 7 is 1, so we put 8 at index 1. And finally, we have 13 mod 7, which is 6, so we put that at index 6. Next, we're going to talk about open addressing. So this is a method of resolving collision by putting the item in a different cell or a different index. So there's two types of open addressing that we're going to be talking about. The first is linear probing, which is less efficient than double hashing, but it's conceptually a lot simpler. So first, let's talk about linear probing. So we have the same hash function as before, which takes a key, and it applies mod 7 to the key. So first we do 3 mod 7, and we get 3. Next we get 10 mod 7, which is also 3. But unlike separate chaining, we don't build a linked list. Instead, we want to find the new index for this key. So all we do for linear probing is we just add 1 and mod 7 again. So 11 mod 7 is 4, so we add 10 at index 4. Next we do 45 mod 7, which is 3. And notice how 3 is already occupied by another item. So we add 1 to 45 and we get 46 mod 7, which equals index 4. But that's also occupied by key of value 10. So we add 1 again. So 45 plus 2 mod 7 is 5. So we put 45 at index 5. Finally, we do 8 mod 7, which is 1, and 13 mod 7, which is 6. And we encounter no collisions in those cases. One problem with linear probing is that we often get clusters because we're simply adding one and modding by the same prime number. And this is problematic because it can lead to big clusters of numbers next to each other. A solution to this problem is double hashing, which uses a primary hash function, which we used before, h of k equals k mod 7, and also a secondary hash function, which is new. So it's 5 minus k mod 5. Typically, the mod value is going to be a prime number, and that's based on number theory. Using a prime number yields fewer common factors to whatever you're modding it with, which means that there will be less collisions on average. So in the case of a collision, we start by doing the primary hash function plus the secondary hash function. And if there's another collision, we do the primary hash function plus two times the secondary hash function, and so on and so forth, until we've checked all the possible indices. So again, we have 3, 10, 45, 8, and 13. Let's start by doing 3 mod 7, which is 3. And then we do 10 mod 7, which is also 3, so that's a collision, so we have to apply the secondary hash function. So we do 3 plus 5 minus 10 mod 5, which is 8, and we have to mod again with the original 7, which is 1. And notice how that is unoccupied, so we put 10 there. Now we do 45, so 45 mod 7 is 3, that results in a collision, so we'd add the secondary hash function to the primary hash function. We get 3 plus 5 minus 45 mod 5, which is 8. 8 mod 7 is 1 again, which is a collision. So we do 3 plus 2 times the secondary hash function, which gives us 13. And we mod 7, we get 6, which is a unoccupied index. Next, we have to deal with 8. So we do 8 mod 7, and that's going to give us 1. So we have to add the secondary hash function. So we do 1 plus 5 minus 8 mod 5, and we get 3. Notice how 3 is also occupied. So we have to add the secondary hash function another time. So we get 1 plus 2 times 5 minus 8 mod 5, and we get 5, and that's a valid index. So we put 8 there. And finally, we have to deal with 13. So 13 mod 7 is 6. 6 is occupied by the key of 45. So we add the secondary hash function, and we get 8 mod 7, which is 1. 
we add it again since one is already occupied and we get 10 mod 7 which is 3 and 3 is also occupied by the key 3 so we add the secondary hash function a third time and we get 12 mod 7 is 5 and 5 is occupied by the key 8 so we apply the secondary hash function a fourth time and finally we get 14 mod 7 which is 0 and that's the index in which we put the key 13. Hopefully you found this video useful in some sort of way and if you did feel free to leave a comment or feedback below.